Imagine for a second, you're 21 years old again, just starting your motorcycling journey. So you missed out on the 80s, which were quite exciting. Everybody was affluent, houses were cheap. Uh, everyone wore red braces. You missed out on the 90s, so you missed out on Oasis. You missed out on Beckham swarming from the halfway line. You missed out on watching Neighbours every night when your mum was making your tea coming home from school. <laughs> And then you, you basically grew up in the 2000s. By the age you were 10, you had a smartphone in your, in your face. Um, and a, a snow day didn't mean a day off from school anymore because you've got remote learning and your mum bought an electric car and took you to school on it. So you really need a little bit of excitement to brighten up your day. So you look towards motorcycles. This could be an avenue. Following your forefathers footsteps and go on a motorcycle tour. The problem is eggs are now 10 quid for a box of six. So Money's hard to come by and motorcycles are more expensive than ever. So I thought, let's do a little rundown of how to get started with motorcycle touring on a budget. And it was actually prompted by a question uh, from S. Millie who, in one of my other videos who asked, what CC and what affordable motorcycle do you suggest to ride around Europe? It's, I thought it was absolutely brilliant question. It's worth a video in its own right. Let's start with the first part. What CC do you recommend? Well, people will tour on anything. It's, people are famous for touring on 125s. And at the other end of the spectrum, people will tour on a BMW R18 with an 1800cc, a huge engine. I personally, as a beginner starting out, you want to get into this cheap, have a great time, minimal budget. Um, but also, if you've got limited experience, I wouldn't go for a 350, 250, or even a 411cc. So these Royal Enfield bikes that are single cylinder, the lower power output, 20, 25 horsepower. I know people will get mad, but I would exclude those if you're a beginner. Yep, they are cheap, but the power output is so low that if you're cruising on a European highway, remember in France, the speed limit's 130 kph for 80 miles an hour. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to cruise at high speed. It's also gonna be hard to pull on to a motorway or highway with traffic going fast around you. You're gonna to have to be wringing the bike's neck all the time, which isn't fun. It isn't fun for the bike either to be constantly flat out. So I'd probably come up then into the 500cc to 650cc range. I don't think personally you need to go to 800 or 1000cc to go touring. Also the higher capacity, the higher the price point goes of these bikes uh, for a given age and mileage. So let's focus then on 500cc to 650 cc it's a brilliant capacity range you can get so much for your money so start with the let's start with the smaller options something like a benelli 502k it's an adventure bike it's will come with the panniers comes with crash protection it's a fully sized motorcycle you can carry loads of luggage on there it's got a 500 cc engine about 47 horsepower it'll cruise at 80 miles an hour and with a bike like that you can buy it brand new for about five and a half, six grand. You can also get it second hand for four and a half grand. Get a really low mileage, well cherished, well looked after bike. And you'll be able to park it everywhere without constantly worrying about it because it isn't a 25 grand motorcycle. You could probably get away with parking it on the side of the street, go to the beach, go and see some sights. And it's not, you're not gonna have the fear of God that someone's gonna disappear with your motorcycle. So I'd go for something like a Benelli, perhaps even a Honda, CBX 500X, I think they've renamed it now to NC 500, but basically the parallel twin Honda, 47 horsepower. And if you're on a restricted license, you don't even need to modify the bike. Um, you can ride that bike legally if you're on the A2 license, and you can still have an absolute amazing tour. It will do everything a bigger bike can do. Maybe we could also talk about Vosges, which is a, it's a Chinese brand that services all different capacities, mainly on adventure bikes. So the bike I had and went to Norway on, I went to Slovenia and Slovakia on, that bike was a 500cc parallel twin, six gears, based on the Honda engine. But with the Vosges, um, you get better standard equipment. So you get crash protection, you can get luggage fitted to standard, the center stand. You don't get heated grips, but you can fit those yourself quite easily as well. You just wire them into a switch live and you'll be away. You can buy a new Vosges for about £3,700. It's amazing value. So if you are on a budget, that's absolutely a perfect bike to get. Um, you also want a bike that you can just use as a tool, really. You don't want to be constantly worrying about the bike. And the Vosges, again, fits that category. 
Now, if you want to step up in the CCs, a 650 Powerlar Twin is also a dream on a tour. My first bike was a 650cc twin, and I remember the riding instructor when I passed my test, he said, for the road, all you ever need is a 650cc. And the more I've matured into this and learned more about bikes, the more I realized he was actually 100%, he was 100% right about that. There's so many to choose from. So some, an easy one is CF Moto, again, Chinese brand, so you're getting really good value. CF Moto 650MT, it's based on the Kawasaki 650 parallel twin, six speed, 50 horsepower, 55 newton meters of torque. I mean, that's the thing that pulls you up hills when you've got uh, luggage and maybe even a pillion. That's this, the torque output that you're interested in. 17 inch front, 17 inch rear, road based tires. And I mean, that's another important thing. Don't go into this thinking before you've done it that you're gonna be off-roading all the time. A lot of European touring is road-based. I think it's important to be honest about that before you buy a bike that's got a 21-inch front wheel, that's got off-road tires. You need to have an idea of this kind of touring you like to do. To be safe, I would stick with a 17-inch front and a road-based tire selection. Now, the 650 from CF Moto can be had for 4999, brand new, so you get the warranty and everything. <laughs> Try and get some panniers thrown in or just get some cheap pannier rails, soft panniers over the back from a company like CN Nice CNC. Whatever style you want, over the top, waterproof, kit in there, cheap tent, and you're absolutely flying. It, it'd be so much fun. Another bike you could probably go for is the, basically the originator of these 650cc parallel twins. It's the Kawasaki engine, um, the Versus 650. So get one 2018 and onwards, 5,000 miles on the clock, barely running nice torquey engine, get one with kit already fitted to it, the previous owners splurged on the accessories catalog. Another bike you could go for in that class is not a P-Twin, but a V-Twin. You could go for the V-Strom 650. Hugely popular bike, there'd be spare parts, aftermarket accessories all over the place for that one. Um, a newer one, which is also based on the same engine design from Moto Marini, which is quite popular, and that's the Xscape 650. And that bike looks nice, it's got a TFT, it's got tire pressure monitoring, gold wheels. It's just kind of a really updated design. You can get those for five and a half, probably second hand, on a dealer deal, because it's still winter, and then the sun's shining, but <laughs> most of the Europe is still winter. You could get those probably money off, or extras fitted to it. And there you've got a 19 inch front, you've got Pirelli Scorpion STR rally tires, which are nice, so 80, 20 on-road, off-road uh, based wheel and tyre choice. So that'd be really cool. Just nice to have a, a, a newer bike as well, newer design, slightly more modern looking. Um, what else is on my list? Yeah, I've got a little bit of a wild card to finish, a little bit of a wild card. You could go for a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now, these are super cheap at the moment. So, 47 horsepower, it'll do cruise at 80. Now, it's not an adventure bike, it's a naked bike, 18 inch front wheel, road-based rubber. But if you want to go for the retro look, the Royal Enfield Intercept, Intercept 650 is so popular that there's aftermarket support for pretty much everything. You can have a full pannier kit, hard plastic, you probably get metal boxes for it, but definitely soft panniers. It's got a center stand, it's cheap, um, it's pretty fuel efficient and if you want to go for a retro look while touring just get a Royal Enfield Interceptor and bear in mind it is a naked bike so you might want to customize it with a bit of a screen to stop that wind buffeting but that's potentially also an option and the money you save on the purchase price you can use that then on accessories to make the bike a little bit more touring friendly one thing I will say is get one with a replaced seat because the standard seat for the Royal Enfield Interceptor is famously uncomfortable. Um, so that doesn't really go well with touring, does it? So that's my list of, of touring bikes. I would probably yeah, go for something like that for a touring. Nice cheap bike, great fun, and literally you can just forget your worries, travel all over Europe, book time off work, do it over a bank holiday weekend if you have to, and Eurostar, it'll be, it'd be the best thing you ever did so i would definitely encourage you if you are thinking about this maybe you're a younger rider just plan some time plan a trip 
And the best way to do it is have a destination in mind. Think about, have a vision. So like I had one, I want to go to Norway. And then everything downstream of that is all goal oriented to making that happen. So you think Norway, that's my top level goal. I want to get here and everything every other action is orientated towards achieving that goal so you're thinking where's the ferries going what's the accommodation like are we camping um, what do we need to take with us all that's what clothing weather protection all those things so that's the that's the trick top level goal think where you want to go and then plan everything else downstream of that and it'll all come together and set a date as well so you don't you don't not do it all right guys hope that was interesting and i'll catch you in the next one thanks a lot